let's go ahead and get started. I am super excited about this. Beautiful, beautiful, very lightweight, very thin wool um, from Berlin Trowbridge, which I've never ordered from them before, and I was very pleased. Um, wonderful fabric. I ordered a whole lot of things, actually. I went there to get a handkerchief or neckerchief, and I came out with, like, two dress links and two neckerchiefs and some silk ribbon and also, like, four links of linen. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not, that doesn't surprise me, though, given how I usually am. So this is just absolutely gorgeous, uh, light Saxon blue wool, and I'm very excited to work with it today. It's very light and very thin. It, it's as thin as a quilting cotton, honestly. So this is going to make a lovely gown. I am reproducing a gown from the Kent State University Museum. I just absolutely love this wool gown. It is a little bit later. It's like 37. I know the, the museum said 27. The, the original note for this piece said 27, um, which I'd agree with that based on the skirt, but those sleeves are definitely like 37, 38. So I think it was probably an earlier dress that got remade, which kind of ref which really does fit this whole um, working class ensemble situation. So I think we're going to take it back to like early 1830s, definitely no more than 36. So I, I'm going to use the tuck, make it kind of an early 1830s dress. So to start off, we're going to cut our skirt. And this is nice wide fabric, 63 inches wide, I think is what it said online. I'm just going to check. This is just going to be pure joy to wear, honestly. I can already tell. Okay, it's running at 59. So we're going to cut two and a half panels. And I need it to cut it 45 inches long because we need to make it a little bit longer this time because of the tuck. And it looks like they ripped the other end, so this should be good rippable fabric. Yep. Okay. So there's one. Let's cut another one and a half. So I'm going to pack this back up because we're not going to touch that at all until I know what I'm doing. So we are going to go ahead and put these together. Sorry. There is no right or wrong side to this, is it? Uh, there is sort of. Okay, I'm going to call this the right side. I don't think there's really a right or wrong. I think it's just the weave is different on either side. Let's start on the first step, which is sewing the side seams together on the skirt. I am using brown thread today because my gray thread has mysteriously disappeared. Hopefully it'll turn up before I have to do the bodice. Or I suppose I can just go buy more. I used it last week to sew up a 1860s skirt. It wasn't even last week, it was like three days ago. And now I just can't find it. No, granted, my sewing room is a hot mess right now, so it's possibly in a pile. But I've looked through all the piles. I think right after we finish sewing up all these seams, I shall put in the tuck which means I need to figure out how I, how high off the ground I want the tuck. Thinking about a one inch tuck, maybe one and a quarter. The original maybe slightly more than that. Maybe one and a half. We shall see what looks good. I have a few inches to play with. Side seats are sewn up working on the hem. So I have a facing here I'm putting on, and also I did mark the tuck as well. Let's start on the facing, and then we'll work on the tuck in a second. So, uh, tuck. I went back and forth because I don't have measurements of the original, so how far up and how big of a tuck. I ended up taking about an inch and a quarter tuck. Original could have been an inch and a half, maybe two inches. It kind of depends on how tall she was and you know other factors like that. But when I put up the inch and a quarter hem, it looked right, or the tuck. When I put up the inch and a quarter tuck, it looked right. Um, as far as how far up, I decided it was about a hand span's width um, from the hem. So I put my hand over there, measured half an inch up because of the facing I was going to take, and called it good. Facing, I just took this bit of white cotton, or brown cotton really, ripped it at six inches, I believe. 
and we're going to leave this top edge raw. I'm not going to actually be washing this dress because it's wool. Just spot cleaning it. So raw edges are going to be fine. You see that on originals. And then we'll work a little bit on this. Oh, pins coming loose. Don't really watch my seam, so make sure I get tiny little stitches on the back. Or really what's the front? It's the back for me sewing. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I like that. Just needs to be ironed down a little bit, but yeah. That's what I'm going for. You'll see the little running stitch here. I'm going to continue working on that. It's probably going to take me a while to get all the way around the skirt. And then I suppose we can go ahead and balance the skirt after I get some sewing done. Next step on the facing, just ironed it up. Again, leaving it raw like we discussed before. And we're just going to take a little stitch. I actually sort of hoped that I would have this facing big enough to hide under the dart or the tuck. It didn't work out that way. My brain apparently did not want to do math last night, so that didn't work out, but that's okay. Alright, let's cut out a bodice. So it has been several weeks since I made the skirt because I felt motivated to do other projects. So anyway, so I've since decided to make this a front opening gown for personal reasons. And so I had to redo the skirt partially. But um, I have a pattern here. Went to a friend's house, my friend Amy, who very sweetly drafted a pattern on me because I was having a few issues with the one I drafted with her over Zoom. Yeah, it's hard to draft things on yourself, even when someone's telling you, here, do this. So. Yes, I had her draft me a pattern, so this one fits, and we're going to use it today. I do have to be careful of not where I'm adding seam allowance, because some of these places need seam allowance. I asked the museum to give me really nice uh, pictures of the gown in question, the original, and they did. And it looks like it opens in the front and the back. Like, it didn't really... It helped in some ways. But yeah. I can't tell if it was a back opening dress and then someone modified it to be a front opening dress. That's really what it looks like to me. So, um... We're going to go front opening. And here's the sleeve we're going to use. This is figure 10 from the Workings Guide. I decided we would do a different sleeve this time. We've used the same two sleeves in all the 1830s dresses, and I decided it was time to branch out. And Pellerine, we are using figure, I think it's 27 from the work of the side. Uh, that Pellerine did go straight across here. I did cut it a bit down to make it more rounded, as per the original. And now lining, and then we can start sewing. First step, sewing all the pieces together. So this is the bodice. Which I already got several of the pieces sewn together. We're just doing a back stitch. Alright, with all the side seams sewn, we're going to put in some piping on the arm side. Very loosely, it's just a loose running stitch. All I really want to do is tack the piping in there. That way I have a line of stitching on the back whenever I go to sew my sleeve in. And I will link above how I make piping. I have a whole video on that. Uh, one thing to note in that video is I show you how to um, turn under the ends in the piping, which I have seen on originals. But as I was studying more, I've noticed this being far more common, where you just take the ends, kind of push them up, and they kind of just join. And I like to go back a little bit just to make sure that it's going to stay up. And so when it's done, it looks like I already put a sleeve on this side. I have to find the join. It looks like that. So it's very hard to tell. 
and it's not usually on a seam because that creates a lot of bulk. All right, here's the sleeve. So um, I sewed it together like we did at the bodice, and I also put a gathering thread in. I didn't feel like that was worth filming, just me putting in a gathering thread. So we have our piping here on the opening part of the sleeve. We're just going to start sewing it in. So with the piping on, I just turn the raw edges under. So we have a nice clean edge now, and I'm tacking that down. I also put the sleeve into the arm's eye because it was bothering me. One was in, the other one wasn't, and that was just not okay with me. Alright, so I unhooked some eyes. I got the bodice finished just like we finished the sleeves. Didn't feel like filming that because we did the same thing. So, hooks. And now the eyes. I haven't quite decided what I wanted to do for the, um, well, okay. I know I want to do buttons and buttonholes for the sleeve cuffs. Because I like this better than hooks and eyes on sleeve cuffs. I just don't know what kind of buttons I want to do. I'm leaning towards self fabric buttons. I'm hoping the wool wouldn't be too thick and I can use a little, you know, and I can use some scraps for that. Alright, so, bodice, let's try it on. Darts are just pinned in. Let's just push the chemise off my shoulders later. Okay. Fits pretty well, I think. Sleeves are a little bit odd. I don't know if I really like the shape or not. They seem a bit short. But like I can still move in them. Particularly if I only do one hook and I think if I or button, button, button hole. If I just do one button and button hole hold it there. I can still move it. It's a little short, so I might lengthen them about two inches next time I do this sleeve shape. Other than that, sleeves are okay. They're nice and billowy. Yeah, okay. Might take in a little bit extra in the darts, but not in the bust. Well, no, not really. A little bit in the in the waist, maybe a quarter inch on either side. Back fits nicely. So yeah. I'll just push the chemise off my shoulders, which just means loosening the ties, which I figured out that I can do that. So if y'all saw the chemise video, I said I didn't like this style of chemise, the square necked one, because it was loose and like constantly falling off my shoulders. Well, I got an original, and the original has ties in the front and the back. So problem solved. So now I actually like the style of chemise, and it still fits off my shoulder if I need it to. So tighten up the darts with just a tiny, little tiny hair. Um, all the way up until, I'm putting a pin here to help me remember. So a quarter of an inch until the pin. And then, but yeah, that fits. So, yay! I have almost an, a whole 1830s dress. I don't know if I should like lengthen these. It fits really well, okay. Let's talk sleeves for a minute, because that is pulling oddly. And if I'm working in this dress, I can reach up, more or less, not great, but I can. Um, I can do things. If I'm bending over, it pulls. Okay. So if I move them up here, about two inches, that's much better. Okay. If I take out the piping, all that work, if I take out the piping, I can add a two inch cuff. I know it's, I've seen that in originals. Two inch cuff, and just fold over and I'll finish off the edges that way. And then in the future, I'll just know to cut about two inches. But I do like that I can fold them up. That is nice. So I need to, whatever I do, make sure I can still fold them up like this, because this is nice for work. And it kind of just hides itself up into the poopy part. Yeah, okay. Um, so sleeve style, not bad. It just needs to be lengthened, which I can do with a cuff. Maybe if I leave 
the piping there and oh that'll work okay so I'll leave the piping here and I'll make the cuff extra and I'll use that piping almost as like a sleeve piping because the original green pelerine has piping detail and an extra piece of fabric over top so it'll match the pelerine that's going to work glad we had this conversation that'll work okay so yeah I just need to measure exactly how much I need to add that sounds like a plan Alright, I'll see you with some darts. So I know I said I was going to work on the bodice and then work on the sleeves, but I got distracted by the sleeves. So what I'm working with is a 4x10 strip piece of fabric and unironed, but here's what the finished sleeve looks like. So it has a little piping detail. I just kept that piping. Super simple. All I had to do was take out that one part of this little part and then reinforce this edge. So I just took out this part of this and reinforce the edges so that that part doesn't come out because that's new attached at all. So because I'm lazy I've been doing this with a double running stitch but I'm just running along this little seam here. Put a lip it back over, fold under these ends and tack it down right there. Let's finish with this dart. I know I have a little bit to do. And waistband. Well, not really a waistband technically, it's just the uh, piping at the waistline. Back stitching as we have been doing with our piping. Even when I'm lazy, at least I'm consistent. If I decide I'm going to do something before I get lazy, I will continue doing it just for consistency. Alright, I'm going to whip that down and we will work on that skirt. And here's our waist edge and I am tacking it into the waistband or at least the piped edge. So I did fix the skirt, I just sewed up that back seam that we did to make it not a, a back closing dress. And I took the side seam and I just, this is where the pocket was. And I just made the whole thing open, so I can still reach in and get my pocket. It's just now a skirt opening. And because I did a side front opening, not a center front opening, I had to do a partial waistband. We've done one of those before, and it was like late last night, and the lighting wasn't great, so the um, footage didn't quite turn out on that, so apologize for that. Pellerine. Here's what the trim is looking like. I need to iron it down. But uh, maybe slightly wider than the original, but not by much. And I wanted to be closer to the one and a half inches um, that the cuffs had. I think the original was about an inch. So I tried to make it an inch and a quarter, kind of like split the difference, kind of make it look similar to the original, but then also kind of make it look like it goes with the cuffs. So, yeah. Just kind of tacking that on. Alright, underpinnings on, um, chemise, corsets, several petticoats, lots of petticoats. So yeah, let's go put on, actually not a dress yet, I'm going to put on a fichu first, so I have one. I actually have two, and a plain one, but I think I wanted to go print it today. I think we're going with pink. Alright, there we go. Um, they're not even, but does it really matter? I don't think so. It's all going to be hidden anyway. And here is the lovely dress. Okay. Try not to mess up my hair. Trying a new 1830s hairstyle for like working stuff. I've seen this hairstyle in several paintings on like working class women. And I guess it makes more sense than the girls if you're, you know, working. I think I did it incorrectly though because the these I twisted them up and looking at the paintings again, I think I should be twisting them down. So you have to note for next time. I may have, yeah, I can tell it's coming out the back, which is not what is desired, I don't think. Yeah, it looks fine for now. So I think what I might do is what I did with the other one, uh, or my, my net one, which is part of the workman's guide, is put a little tape in the back, type, um, put a little piece of twill tape in the back, and then you tie it around your waist, and that kind of catches the front too, but it also pulls the back one down. Which makes a lot of sense. 
Alright, yes, definitely fix the sleeve adding that extra inch and a half. Good. This is a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be with these little thread loops. There we go. There's one. No, go around the button. There you go. Ha ha. Ha ha. Got it. Alright, there we are. <laughs> Working class ensemble, which is perfectly acceptable for a um, more wealthy impression too. There's nothing wrong with it per se. I would just probably change out the printed one for perhaps um, one of net, which actually be a lot cooler. Well, I could wear the printed one too, and I'd probably put in sleeve puffs. Although for you know working, you probably don't want as poofy sleeves, but it's still a very fashionable gown, um, and even the wool itself will kind of poof out a little bit, so it still looks very fashionable. And yes, the thing in the back is pulling itself up. I will have to fix those. I didn't quite process that, so good note. I'm glad we figured this out now, as opposed to if I was actually at an event. So I will, I will work on those. But yeah, I still have both little pocket holes, which do match up perfectly with my pocket in my petticoat. Although I will probably, if I like working stuff, make a just patchwork pocket or something and just and wear it underneath so yeah length is good i'll put it down so you can see the length a little bit somewhat there it is my very non-period correct socks but um yeah definitely love the little tuck detail i think that's really cute so i'm glad we did that and the print is very cute I could put a brooch here if I wanted to, but I don't really need to, so I won't. I'm very glad we made this a front opening gown. So I think the next wool dress will make a back opening gown. So I'll have one of each for wool, and uh, the next silk dress is going to be a front opening gown. So that'll be one of each of, of silk. I'm trying to make one of each of every dress that we make to kind of even it out. Even though most dresses were back closing, I Sometimes I have to get dressed by myself, and I need those options. Every other dress is going to be front opening for whatever fiber we're doing. So looking at the original a little bit closer, really zooming in, what I think is going on, because it, it doesn't fit the mannequin very well, what I thought was the front opening, I think it's two pieces of piping going down the front. So it looks like it opened, it opened, but it doesn't. I think it's actually a back opening gown. So. Um, that's a little bit of a deviant, and of course we didn't pleat down the sleeves because we're doing earlier 1830s, and we don't pleat the sleeves down in the 1836, so have those sleeves. But other than that, I think it looks pretty close to the original. I do have the coloring in here, which I'm going to pin shut today. Okay, here we go. Haha. <laughs> but yeah, that... Let me just pull this back a little bit. There we go. Okay. But yes. I don't know, it just makes it make... I think this makes it look a lot more, I don't know, um, I almost want to say like Jane Eyre boarding school-ish. I don't know what it is about the cape, but um, yeah, um, that's what it is. But it looks very similar to the original. I think this is a little bit longer. It probably could have cut off maybe where the bust cuts off and made it a little bit closer to the original, but um, it isn't bad and it'll keep me warm, which is kind of the point. So. Um, I don't have to wear the pelerine, I can just wear it with a fichu underneath, but this is just a nice option, and if it's cold, I probably will be wearing this. Uh, if it's warm, as most likely it will be, I live in Texas, I'll wear it like this. So that was a very enjoyable project. I have had this spool for not very long actually, but it's been sitting there taunting me and I absolutely love it. So I'm glad we got it done and um, have another 1830s dress. Not that I really technically need it anymore, but if I'm going to start doing some lower class stuff, what I have already is upper class. So, kind of nice to have something slightly different, uh, but it's very comfortable. I would not feel at all uneasy doing things like bending over or getting firewood or gardening or really doing anything. I can really work in this. This is fine. It's not uncomfortable at all. I can move the sleeves up, perhaps, if I can get the, the buttons off, you can just tuck these underneath. I 
and that actually makes it look like it's supposed to be like that because the poop just goes all the way down so yeah that's not bad um it definitely is cooler wow that makes a difference okay well cooking at a hearth you don't want this because you want to be able to cover your arms in case of you know, like sparks or anything but you know anything else like chopping vegetables or doing whatever and if it's really really hot this will help i'm going to take a break from the 1830s for a while i don't know what's going to go on for y'all with the whole video thing but i gotta delve into the 1870s and 1880s so yay so um i don't know how i feel about that i'm kind of sad that i'm not going to get to do a lot of hand sewing but i have an 1880s machine right now that i'm borrowing from a friend so kind of excited about getting to use that very glad we got it done Thank you so much for joining me today as we made an 1830s dress um, by hand for a working class ensemble. Have a fantastic week and I will see you back here on Monday.